I've reviewed 22 monitors in the span of three years, either directly or indirectly because someone else in the shop was reviewing it, but I got to play around with it. Actually, it's more than 22 monitors if you count the number of monitors that I see every day, but I just never got around to reviewing. And we're talking about different brands, different sizes, different specs for different purposes, whether pang office, pang gaming, pang editing, pang extreme gaming. Lahat na natutunan ko, isasama ko sa video na to to give you the best advice for what features you need to look for when buying a monitor. Ano yung overhype feature? Ano yung underhype feature? Ano yung useless feature? And what's one thing about monitors you should consider that no one else seems to talk about? For the too long didn't watch crowd, I have a summary at the end of every feature saying quickly if you need to know it or not. All of that and part 1 pa lang yun. Also in this video is part 2 where I talk about common mistakes made by users that affect the performance of your monitors. So let's get started. So waka na ba sa unactivated windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mo lang sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang um order. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, nagsindigi ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Most overhyped feature, refresh rate. The first thing gamers ask about is what refresh rate of monitor and brands have made this number front and center in their advertising. The general rule here is higher number better, so a refresh rate of let's say 144Hz is better than 70Hz. But many computer users don't need super high refresh rates. Simple office tasks, even most forms of video editing work are fine at something around 70Hz. Even for gamers, refresh rates don't need to be crazy. Personally, as a gamer, I was fine with 144Hz. But my personal comfort level went up to 180Hz after I started playing around with the ROG XG27ACS. 180Hz sounds like a lot, but there are monitors out there which go way beyond that with refresh rates of a truly insane 540Hz. Now, 99% of gamers out there don't need that fast of a refresh rate. So, save yourself a lot of money, don't be tempted by insane refresh rates. For most PC users, any refresh rate above 70 hertz is comfortable. For gamers, between 120 and 200 hertz is fine. Bottom line, you need to choose this based on what's right and comfortable for you. Now the most underhyped feature, and that's the size. It might seem obvious that the larger the screen, the more useful the monitor. But I've seen a lot of customers buy an expensive computer and then opt to cheap out and buy a teeny weensy monitor. All of the high-end hardware in your PC is useless if your monitor can't display all of the graphic goodness the PC is capable of generating. Larger screens are way more immersive and allow you to appreciate the graphic detail of your games. And we just talked about refresh rates where I mentioned that the refresh rate you need depends on the kind of user you are. That's not true for size. Whatever kind of computer user you are, you will benefit from a larger screen. For work, the added screen real estate allows you to have more windows open at the same time. Kahit anong trabaho mo, you'll be more productive with a larger screen and you can show this video to your boss. For a gamer, a larger screen means being drawn into the game, better immersion. So for screen size, larger is always better. You can save by having lower refresh rates, lower response time even, which we'll talk about soon. And you put those savings and invest them in a larger sized monitor. Across the board, this is a quality of life improvement. Whatever you do with your computer, it will be better with a larger monitor. 
course, aside from the cost, there are some practical limitations to having large monitors. And one of those limitations is your available physical desktop space. A little bit of a workaround for that is getting creative in the positioning of your monitors. This is especially true if you have multiple monitors like me. I have a left to right workflow for my monitors. I have an underslung monitor. I have a monitor in vertical mode. And it really is kind of like a game of Tetris, optimizing the position, layout of the monitors to have the most optimal use of the space. Now, you might be worried about having a large screen so close to your face, especially if your desk is small. I've tried really large monitors in a relatively small desktop space, and it wasn't a problem. I didn't have any dizziness, no discomfort, even while gaming. Size, strangely, because it's mentioned everywhere else, is hardly ever mentioned in monitor recommendations. But it's one of the top specs in determining whether the monitor will be enjoyable to you. Bottom line, larger is better. Spend your budget accordingly. Another thing which varies a lot from user to user is resolution. Basically, the higher the refresh rate, the more detail is crammed on the screen. But that means everything gets smaller and smaller. Generally, we're now at 1080p as default. So most computers, most monitors will have 1080p. The next step up would be 1440p or 2K, and then after that would be 4K. So there are just three main resolutions right now. You can go lower, you can go higher, but that is the mainstream range. And as you might have guessed based on our discussions of the previous features, if you want higher resolutions, you have to pay more. So this is another example of choosing a monitor feature which is best for you to save you money. Because 1080p is really good for most PC functions out there. For a lot of work, 1080p is fine. Even for a lot of gaming, 1080p is fine. So it's up to you, the user, to determine if you do need higher fresh rates. A lot of people don't need 4K, for example. Personally, as a gamer, I would suggest getting a 2K monitor. 2K gives you a lot of nice detail, and it's an efficient pairing with a lot of the high-end graphics cards. But that's just my personal preference because I am more of a story type of gamer rather than a very quick action reflexes type of gamer. What refresh rate you need really depends on you, and choosing one which is best for you will save you a lot of money. Bottom line, when you're thinking about refresh rate, think like Goldilocks. Which one is best for you? From nice to have, to must have, to useless. And for me, this is response time that might be a bit surprising. Both refresh rate and screen size are important. You should pick a monitor that fits your specific needs. But one feature that you can forget about that's basically useless is response time. Response time is basically how long it takes for a monitor to shift from one color to another. You want this to be fast, so the lower the number, the better, meaning less time has elapsed. So for example, a 3 millisecond response time is better than a 7 millisecond response time. But what makes this feature useless is that there isn't any standard way of measuring response time so brands can basically report, hey, our monitor has one millisecond response time without mentioning that this was arrived at under favorable conditions using a test cherry-picked by the brand. To be honest, I never look at response times when choosing my own personal monitors. It's useless information for me. I found if I choose a monitor based on the refresh rate I need and the size that I want, when I use that monitor, I have no issues with whatever the reported response time is. Feel free to ignore this spec. I do. Second most useless feature, HDR or high dynamic range. It's a feature you'll find on a lot of high-end monitors. Now what HDR is supposed to do is that you can see details even in the darkest and brightest portions of a scene. So when you're playing a game, when something is shrouded in shadow, but that's just enough light for the game to determine that the gamer should be able to see something, with a good HDR monitor, you should be able to see just a little glimpse of that. Same with video, like in a movie, like you have a very dark scene, but the filmmaker intended for you to see a little bit of detail, maybe a silhouette, maybe the glint of a gun, whatever. HDR is supposed to be able to give you that image. In practice though, HDR, at least in gaming, feels 
like you just toned down the saturation on everything, making a scene look lifeless, like a gray tint was placed over the entire scene. Take a look at the shirt from Wii PC. The top clip has HDR on and it looks so dead <laughs> compared to the scene below with HDR off. I associate vibrant colors with better image quality. But I know this is a personal opinion. I asked a non-gamer which scene she preferred and she immediately chose HDR on. So I guess to each their own, but I mean, really, come on, just look how washed out those colors are with HDR on. Monitors come with HDR ratings and choosing one with a high HDR rating can add considerably to the price. And you do want a high HDR rating as the effect on the lower end of the scale is meh. Nag HDR ka pa. Bottom line, you might like HDR, but even if you do, paying a hefty price to get a good implementation of the technology probably isn't good value for a lot of users. All monitors generally tend to look the same. The newer ones are flatter, lighter, but you know a monitor when you see one. But the tech behind how monitors actually display images, that's pretty varied. These panel types are all associated with their different pros and cons, and there are four main types. TN, VA, IPS, and OLED. TN panels have high refresh rates, but color and image quality suffer. VA is roughly the middle ground between TN and IPS, middle for image quality and price, but with decent refresh rates. IPS panels usually have better color and image quality than VA or TN. And the refresh rates of IPS monitors are now comfortably high enough for most gamers. And that's why most mainstream gaming monitors are now IPS. Although IPS does have some issues, there is the infamous IPS glow, although in most modern monitors, that's rarely an issue anymore. And the blacks on an IPS panel are not as good as those on other panels. Which leaves OLED, and this is the best for image quality. The best. They also have recently caught up in refresh rates, so we're now seeing very interesting OLED monitors for gamers. The downside of this though is that OLED is significantly more expensive than the other types of monitors mentioned. The bottom line is get yourself an OLED if the budget allows it, IPS if not. Next up, a feature specifically for gamers is Sync. Put simply, the thing with gaming is that your GPU is pretty amazing and it can generate a lot of frames per second. If your monitor can't cope with all of those frames, you get issues like jaggedness or screen tearing. Instead of a fluid scene in the game, you've got jumbled choppiness. To prevent this, there are two main types of sync and they work with specific GPUs. G-Sync works with NVIDIA GPUs. G-Sync uses both hardware. There's a special component in G-Sync rated monitors and software to ensure that the gaming experience is smooth. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, best to get a G-Sync rated monitor. AMD, the main rival of NVIDIA in the GPU space, has its own sync, which they call FreeSync. This is software only, so it's cheaper for monitor manufacturers to implement FreeSync. So if you have an AMD GPU, best to get a FreeSync compatible monitor. Now that's very simplified. There's a lot of complexity in this particular topic. There are different versions of G-Sync. There are different versions of FreeSync. You might recall that I said G-Sync monitors have special hardware, but that's not true all of the time since there are monitors rated as G-Sync compatible, which don't have special hardware in them. So it's a whole kind of worms. It's a lot to unpack in this video, so I'm just sticking to the very basics. The main question I get asked about sync though is, will one work with the other? And the answer is yes and no. If you get a free sync monitor and an NVIDIA GPU, will it work? Yes, in the sense that the monitor will display and you will probably even have a good gaming experience. What will not work is the sync. Remember, free sync monitors only work with AMD cards. There are some instances where a monitor is rated both for G-Sync and FreeSync. That's usually a monitor which is rated as G-Sync compatible and FreeSync. 
The problem is, monitor brands don't always make it clear what their monitor is rated for, leaving the customer to plow through the internet looking for information. Bottom line, G-Sync monitors are for NVIDIA cards, FreeSync monitors are for AMD cards. If this is something you really want in your monitor, best to do some additional research to make sure you're getting the proper monitor for your setup. One thing we all want in our monitors is longevity. Monitors are expensive, and even if they don't fail completely, there's always that fear that some portion of them will fail, like a couple of pixels go dead here and there. Two things about longevity. The better the brand, generally, the longer the life of the monitor. We did a video two years ago where I bought the three cheapest gaming monitors I could find on Lazada. After the video, we used them daily in the shop. Less than two years later, one of the three is showing significant problems. The Reb ML monitor has dead pixels galore starting around November 2023, and it's getting worse as time goes on. We have two Prism Plus monitors from roughly around August 2023, one is doing great, but the other one has a minor issue when switching between ports, between inputs. Now, you compare that to a 7-year-old gaming monitor I have, the ViewSonic behind me. I use it daily, and it still looks great. Still bright, colors very discernible, and no dead pixels at all. But there are exceptions to the good brand long life. This BenQ gaming monitor developed these solid black bars after, I think, around two years of use. BenQ is a good brand. It should be reliable. But in this case, the monitor did not stand up to the test of time. I had an old Asus monitor which died, but to be fair, that was around five years old. So there is a lot of variability. You could get a lesser known monitor brand and it could last for years. You could get a better known brand and it'll cop out after around two years. But if you're looking for longevity, to improve your chances a lot, it would be best to go with established brands like ASUS, ViewSonic, BenQ, MSI. Bottom line, you get what you pay for most of the time. So that was part one, some of the main features of any monitor and depending on what kind of user you are, you can just select what you need and at what speed and that should help you save a lot of money. Now on to part two where you've bought a new monitor, congrats! Here are three things you should do with it right away. Number one, you should plug it into the graphics card. I get a lot of customers that get confused because their PC has onboard graphics and it also has a graphics card. If your PC has a graphics card, plug the monitor into the graphics card. No brainer, don't think about it. If your PC doesn't have a graphics card, that's when you plug it into the back of the motherboard, the HDMI or sometimes display port there. Simple rule, if there's a GPU, plug it into the GPU. If not, plug it into the motherboard. Because if you get it wrong, like it does have a GPU and you plug it into the motherboard, a lot of times, you just won't get any display. If it's a brand new computer, you'll think that it's broken, the shop that you bought it from screwed you over, did something wrong. If there's a GPU, just plug it into the GPU. But what cable to use? A lot of the monitors now, and a lot of the input options, whether that's the graphics card or the motherboard, come with both HDMI and DisplayPort. If you have a choice, use DisplayPort. A lot of the maximum specs of a monitor can only happen if you're using a particular cable and that's usually display port. The higher refresh rates we're talking about, the higher resolutions, all of that sounds nice on paper. But if you just use the wrong cable, your monitor might not hit those max specs. So just to keep things simple, usually the display port will allow you to hit those max specs. And last practical tip, be sure to set the refresh rate of your monitor in Windows. It doesn't matter if your monitor can hit 540 hertz. If it's not set properly, you might not get that refresh rate because you're not telling your hardware to push the monitor that fast. I've seen it happen many times when you have a nice fancy monitor, you set up Windows, and you don't do anything. You don't go under the hood. 
And then Windows will just set the default refresh rate at something like 60 hertz or something, which is crazy because you're paying for the higher refresh rate. Super easy to go to the settings, the display settings of Windows, and to set the refresh rate to what you need it to. So that's it. I hope part one allowed you to appreciate some features and allowed you to cut out some features that you might not need so that you can save money on your eventual purchase. And then part two, just some practical tips to allow you to get the max specs of that monitor that you finally pulled the trigger on. If this video is too long, you just really want the pinaka basic bottom line, OLED is awesome and it is worth the additional cost. Thanks for watching.